Good day, this is Ray. Today's August 15th, 2020, and for me, day number 158 of social distancing. I hope, as always, you, your family, your friends, and loved ones are doing well. Um, last week I had mentioned I wanted to talk about the different forms of lupus today. Um, but due to this week's events in my life, um, I decided to change that up. As a matter of fact, uh, last night and this morning, I was really giving a lot of thought to this. And um, you know, let me just go ahead and address this. So this week, I was able to drive for the first time in six months after having a grand mal seizure back in February. If you don't know, if you have a seizure in some states, if not all, uh, you have to go six months without a seizure to be able to drive again. So I was cleared by my neurologist on Wednesday and um, definitely took advantage of that. Got on the road, just went out for about 15 minutes, turned on my music, tried to get used to being behind the wheel again and looking in the rear view mirror and the side view mirrors and all that stuff. And um, it was a little bit brushy, but was able to make it through it. Friday, I had an appointment with my rheumatologist uh, to get labs done, get a, a general checkup. More importantly, to have labs done to see if the medications that I'm on are working and if anything needs to be adjusted. So I uh, went to the doctor's office. Of course, this is a much different world than it was when I left the house pretty much about five months ago when I had my life um, to get my back brace. And that was pretty much it. I didn't have any doctor's appointments outside of doing telemedicine um, for those months. And I don't go out with anybody else because you know, I'm immunocompromised and, um, you know, I'm just at higher risk. And also senior citizens and people with underlying uh, conditions are also at the same risk. Um, so anyway, went to the doctor, took every precaution, used this tool to touch the buttons on the elevator. Uh, I was fortunate there weren't a lot of people there, so I only got on the elevator by myself. And uh, would keep my distance from people, I had a mask. Um, use hand sanitizer, wash my hands after um, I got my labs done, went home, washed my hands, changed clothes and everything. And uh, so, you know, hopefully I did everything I needed to. But anyway, my appointment itself, um, or at least the time that I was at the clinic, was from 11 to about 1 o'clock. So it took a little longer than usual, even when there's a lot of people there. You know, it could take about that. But the fact that there weren't many people there said, showed to me that you know they're, they're definitely down the staff to be able to um, you know get people in and out and that's fine um, i had a little bit more time to talk to my rheumatologist but anyway you know some of the big things i've been dealing with over the past couple of months is swelling inflammation joint pain fatigue um you know rashes and things like that these are not things that i talk about a lot to family friends or loved ones because Honestly, what do they care? To be honest, nobody wants to hear that all the time. And so, you know, one of my go-to answers that I have quite a bit is when they ask me how I'm doing, I say, I'm fine. And I would say most of the time that it was a lie. Um, and you know what's funny is I see that uh, I do um, chat rooms and uh, social media um, pertaining to lupus and chronic illnesses and things. So I see people talk about the same thing is... You know, you go to your doctor and they see that you look good and they assume that you're good, but you're not. And uh, you just try to put your best foot forward and move on. But this is an invisible illness. And, um, you know, I almost relate this to being African-American is that I can go out and people will assume one thing because they don't know me. They group me into the category of being an African-American, and that can mean so many things to people. But, you know, it's just living on this world, living in this world for the years that I have, this is what I've observed. And also having this chronic illness, having SLE, having rheumatoid arthritis. People will say, I know somebody with lupus, I know somebody who has lupus, or someone knows somebody that has lupus, and they're doing fine. And I'm like, okay, that could be true and that's great however i'm not one of those people that's doing fine and from what i'm seeing you know in the groups the groups that i'm involved with that's the same thing there's people who are doing fine in a sense that they're not having major flares significant flares or you know certain organs aren't being attacked and um they may be in uh, remission and that's fantastic 
However, there are more components to that than just how are you doing physically? You know, how are you doing emotionally? How are you doing financially? Spiritually? All those things. And, you know, for me, I do my best to try to hide that stuff. Because, um, you know, like today, after just walking a few hundred yards yesterday, I'm in significant pain. Like my whole body. But you can't see that. You, you, and I, and I almost refuse to let people see that. It's almost like I have to put on a show in order to, to for people to see what I'm feeling because then they'll assume I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling like you, but I'm not. I'm doing the best I can to get through this. Um, every day is a struggle. Some days are better than the others, and other days, you know, it takes me forever to just get out of the bed, and I have to work, and I'm fatigued. And um, I'm just trying to get by. So anyway, you know, if you have family or friends, don't assume that they're like the person you know or the person you've heard from. That may not be the case. And I know in my case, that's not the case. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. I take my medications on time. I, you know, my diet is better than what it was. You know, definitely not eating a lot of fast food. Um, you know, I've had the past couple of days, I have had some fast food, but, um, you know, I stick to the things that um, are light. So even if it comes with uh, french fries, more than often, I won't eat that. Um, definitely stay away from fried foods and stuff like that. So um, anyway, you know, you might say to somebody who has a chronic illness that they look good. And that's flattering, you know. Thank you. However, I don't feel good. I'm just trying to get by. And um, if you live with somebody or you know somebody that has it, treat them as an individual. Don't treat them as a group of people because we are not a group of people. Like we are a group of people. We have, you know, we have a, some form of lupus or chronic illness. Yes, and there are some symptoms and things that we have a share in common, but our struggles are not the same. And it may be someone who's newly diagnosed, someone who was diagnosed as a child, or, you know, somewhere in between. As for me, I was diagnosed last year, and so much I'm having to learn in order to to get to a place that I'm emotionally strong enough to be able to talk about this to people. I've shut out quite a few people because of this. Um, it's, it's very hard to talk to people about this because um, they assume so many things about you, and uh, it's just frustrating, to be honest. So I'm going to encourage you if you're watching this and you, you know you don't have the chronic illness is to listen and be patient if you are struggling with this find the tools to be able to cope with and i'm fortunate in that i'm able to see a therapist and that even though my medical expenses are high i've spent thousands of dollars in the past two and a half years um i do have the insurance to be able to make it possible for me to be able to do this, even though you know I have to have uh, plans to be able to pay a lot of these bills, that's fine. You know, it'll be paid off. And that's the other thing to think about is that if somebody's going through a chronic illness, they're going to be seeing a doctor a lot more than someone who's normally healthy who will go in for a physical. Well, this year, I met my deductible in, before February, and then I met my out-of-pocket maximum before June half a year and that was the same thing last year I met my out of pocket maximum in a short period of time so I'm just gonna let's throw out around about number 5,000 let's just say I spent 5,000 each year for the past two years and then 2,500 year before unexpectedly you know now that I in hindsight look back you know if I had Knowing that this was going to be my life, I would have saved the money for not only the deductible for the out-of-pocket maximum the year before. You know, not a lot of people have that type of money and savings to be able to cover that, cover those type of expenses. Um, and I've had, I've had to do some things to, to make it happen, dip into my 401k a little bit, which it was definitely I didn't want to do, but I had to do it because um, I had to move and things like that. And I'm paying that back. But it's just, um, it's a struggle. It is a struggle. There are resources out there, so definitely seek those resources out. And, um, you know, if you're 
willing and up to it. Talk to your family and friends about it. Be sure that share with them where you are in your journey and what struggles you're having. Um, that's what I'm going to try to do. You know, I keep saying that. And I'm um, hoping to get to that point, but I didn't reach that. You know, I really don't know how to talk to people about this. And, um, you know, I just hope other others seek out, you know, the same type of resources. You know, there's so much on the Internet, of course. There's therapists. There's your care team and all those things that you can uh, reach out to. But anyway, um, if you made it this far, please like, comment, and subscribe uh, below. And um, next week, I am going to talk about lupus and other forms of it, unless something dictates that to change it. I appreciate you taking the time to watch today. I hope you and your family and friends and all have a great week. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Is she an angel? She's a miracle. Is she the devil?